What's up everybody? Today we're taking a look at my entire sneaker collection. And by entire sneaker collection, I mean the entire sneaker collection. Over 100 pairs of shoes filled with grails, samples, pairs worth thousands of dollars, and some pairs that are literally one of one. And actually, before we dive into the larger collection, I got a brand new pair of sneakers that I'm going to add to the collection, and it came in just in time for today's video because of StockX's brand new express shipping option. And that is my segue into the StockX sponsored portion of this video. Huge thank you to them for supporting the channel and also allowing me to show you guys the express shipping option firsthand. And actually, it's kind of ironic because I already opened this package, or at least cut it open, because I did not realize these were the shoes that were coming from StockX because it was such a quick order. I couldn't believe it. And I'm not gonna lie, this is a pair of sneakers that I've been wanting for a really long time and I finally got it. And because of their express shipping option, I was able to get it in time for today's sneaker collection video, which is awesome. You guys might already know what this is. Ah, hold on, this is ridiculous. From the top of the box, this is the special box, Concepts Nike SB Dunk Low Orange Lobsters. If you didn't know, now you know. Here we go, let's put them out of the box really quickly. Whoa. Oh man, that almost just, that could have been real bad. I have a Red Bull right there, my laptop's right there. That would have been a problem. Whew. Okay, so this box is crazy. It's a picture frame with a lobster on a telephone. You got the back of the picture frame and the back of the box, which I didn't even realize. It's got concepts on there. Very, very cool packaging. Obviously, this is a special packaging. I believe there's a standard Nike SB box in there, but uh, I have not actually seen this in person, at least not outside of like a sneaker event or something like that. So let me pop the top on this guy, see what we've got. And if you guys are not familiar with StockX's express shipping option, they just released it. it allows you to buy shoes with this icon on StockX's website and receive them within three days, which is absolutely insane. It's the one thing that I've been wanting from StockX for years, and they finally have it, and it's amazing for me because as a sneaker reviewer, it's really important for me to get sneakers early so that I can review them as early as possible for you guys. And now StockX has given me a way to buy a bunch of sneakers on their website and get them incredibly quickly so I can give you guys super early reviews even faster than I was before. So first thing inside the box, we got the StockX receipt. I'm not going to show you guys that because it's got my info on it. And then we've got the, uh, what's this? This is, oh, it's a bear brick. I didn't even realize it came with the bear brick. I'm not sure if I'm gonna open this or not. Let me know, I kinda wanna keep the packaging like pristine, but I am gonna wear the shoes. But above the bear brick, we've got the Nike SB box right here. And like I said, I grabbed these off of StockX's Express Ship program, so I got it in three days from when I ordered it. It's incredible. And if you guys wanna check out the program for yourself, StockX has actually given me a discount code to give to you guys. So if you buy something off of StockX's website using the Express Ship, if you use my code SETHFOWLER15, you get $15 off of orders of $150 or more. Really great discount code, and it'll allow you to save some money on sneakers that you probably were already gonna buy, and now you can get them even faster than you would've like last week before the program was introduced. So let's pop the top on these guys, see what we've got. Here we go. The Orange Lobsters. I'm so excited to add these to my collection. I don't have a huge amount of dunks. I've got like four or five pairs of dunks in my collection. Now we've got six or five. I'm not sure how many I have, but either way, this is an incredible pair of shoes. I've had multiple pairs of this sneaker, but just never in my size. And that's really because I bought pairs to give away on the channel, but I never bought a pair for myself. And now I feel like I can treat myself. And I treated myself to Express Ship and, of course, the special box, which probably was unnecessary. I could have just grabbed the regular box. But either way, this is an incredible pair of sneakers. And then beneath the StockX tag, you've got this beautiful orange upper that comes in this really nice orange new buck. You've got this really cool speckled orange, uh, I guess, overlay on the upper of the shoe. Of course, it comes with white laces. I believe the other shoe does come with, yes, it does, it does come with a couple extra sets of laces. If you decide to switch them out, you got sort of like a teal and orange. And then, of course, also inside the box, you've got some rubber bands that you can put around the toe of your sneaker, which I'm not going to do, but it's a cool look if you're just displaying this pair of shoes. It is such a dope look, man. I love this sneaker so much. I've wanted this sneaker for so long and now I finally have it. And you know what? I'm not gonna waste any time. I'm gonna throw these guys on feet really quick and show you guys what they look like in my apothecary fit. <sighs> Having trouble unlacing these guys to throw these guys on really quick. Let me see if my wife can film me outside. Hold on one second. Hey babe. Perk of marriage is always having a cameraman around, so that's a plus. I'm so happy I picked these up. Again, if you guys want to check out StockX's express ship option for yourself, make sure to click the link at the top of the description below and use my code SETHFOWLER15 for $15 off your order of $150 or more. It's absolutely worth it, especially if you already plan to grab some sneakers. Grab these, grab any of the express ship options, or just grab regular sneakers on StockX. It's an awesome place to buy and sell sneakers. Plus, it's the place that everyone uses to track prices of sneakers, so you probably already have the app. Let's continue on with the sneaker collection. Here's sneaker number one. Well, actually, it's my most recent sneaker pickup, but still, there you go. First sneaker in the collection. Actually, while we're on the topic of special boxes, let me show you guys some of the special boxes and some of the sneakers that come inside the special boxes that I've gotten from brands over the years. Now, I've got a bunch of them down at my feet, and I'm sure some of them I just don't have anymore, whether it's because I gave them to friends or returned them to brands or whatever the case may be. I've been doing this for like seven years, and so I've gotten a lot of random stuff from brands and uh, a lot of really cool boxes, and I try and keep the coolest ones. So let's start things off with my favorite box and probably the largest box I ever got, at least for the first like three years 
years of doing YouTube, and that is this insane Gatorade Michael Jordan box from Jordan Brand, back when Jordan Brand was sending me a lot of sneakers. This is actually a box, I guess, promoting the Gatorade Jordan Brand collaboration. There was some more stuff in here, like shirts and uh, Gatorade and stuff like that in the top area, but the Gatorade went bad. Well, I drank a lot of it. <laughs> the shirt, I don't know where the shirt went. There was also a jacket too, but it came with an Air Jordan 32 Low in the Gatorade colorway, which I never wore. I wanted to play basketball in it, but I also didn't want to ruin the uh, very nice package. And then also the Air Jordan 6 Gatorade, which I did wear. And uh, I keep this package because this package is dope and it's probably one of the coolest things I've ever gotten from a brand. So a huge thank you to Jordan brand for sending this out. I've moved house like five times since I got this and it's been such a pain <laughs> <laughs> to carry with me wherever I go, but I never want to get rid of it. On the other side of the brand lines, we've got this crazy box from Adidas. I believe it still turns on, let me see. All right, it's not. So this is a TV that had this really cool, like, see-through screen. Played this video about the Adidas Superstar, I think it was. And then inside, once the video was done, it would light up and it would show you this insane Adidas Superstar that was in there, which I don't think is, oh, it is still in there. One of them is on my shelf right now, but the other one, is still in there. Probably the coolest package that I've ever gotten in terms of tech. I believe it was for the 50th anniversary of the Adidas Superstar. I need to charge it. I think it can be charged, so. I kinda wanna charge it and show you guys, or you guys can check out the video of me receiving this from like, three years ago. So check that out on my channel if you haven't yet. Genuinely a really, really cool package, and this is another one that I'm probably not going to get rid of, although they do take up a lot of space. Got dust all over myself. A more recent package is this one from Nike and FaZe Clan. It's designed to look like a PC, which is super cool. It's for the, uh, the Phase Nike LeBron Next Gens. Super cool shoe. It didn't pop the way that I think people expected it to pop, especially being a Phase collaboration. Awesome, awesome collaboration. I love the way this package looks. I love the idea of having it look like a gaming PC. Big thank you to Phase Clan for sending this my way. They actually reached out and uh, offered it to me, and I was like, of course, I will take that. That would be amazing. I do have a lot of other really cool, like, special boxes from brands that aren't sneaker brands, so I won't show them in this video, but we got stuff from, like, the NBA. But let me continue on with the uh, special boxes from sneaker brands. Over here, it smells like chicken. And that's not a joke. This is actually the Crocs Kentucky Fried Chicken collaboration that features Crocs with the uh, KFC chicken drumsticks there as the gibbet, which is kind of wild. They smell more like cornflakes than anything else. And uh, I've got to say that this is probably one of my favorite packages that I've gotten from a brand just because of how insane it is and how ridiculous it is. I'm sure you can buy these on the secondhand market, maybe StockX. You can grab, um, probably not this package, but the shoes if you're trying to rock some KFC Crocs. Another awesome package is from Mountain Dew and the Sixers, which is super cool, or Joel Embiid. Favorite player in the NBA right now. Now, I love Joel Embiid, I love the Sixers, and Mountain Dew, back when I was still drinking soda, was one of my favorite sodas. Inside this package, you had this uh, Mountain Dew can with Joel Embiid on it, which I thought was awesome. You also had this, um, is that a battery bank? Is that what this is? I'm not sure. And then you also had these custom sneakers right here, which said uh, Embiid in the process on the side. And then they also featured, ooh, the left shoe said Embiid 215. And then on the tongue of the sneaker, you actually had uh, Embiid's jersey cut up, sewn onto the tongue, which is super cool. This is before the Under Armour Embiid ones came out. So this is not Embiid's signature shoe. This was out before Embiid's signature shoe. It's the hover somethings, but really cool, custom. I love this shoe a lot. Love this package. And of course, love the little Embiid on the top of the lid. Very, very cool. Next, I've got this really crazy box from Pharrell. NERD and Adidas for the Pharrell NERD Human Race NMDs. This box was crazy. It came with a script tape on the outside and then obviously was a pair of Pharrells on the inside. These are the Pharrells right here. I don't keep them in the box. This is a sample pair as well, which is crazier. Super stoked on this shoe. I have not worn it because it's a sample. I want to keep it in pristine condition. Absolutely love it. And I think I bumped the mic out of the way with this box. Now I know for a fact that I have more special boxes around the studio and probably at the apothecary office, but I don't have them with me. Actually, hold on, I do have one, hold on. This is an absolutely insane custom pair of sneakers that the Kick Fix sent me. Obviously, if you guys know me, you know that I started a sock brand called Apothecary, Carry, and uh, the Kick Fix sent me a custom pair of Air Jordan 1s designed to look like a combination or a what the of the Apothecary socks that I believe he loved the most. So on the top of the box, you've got Apothecary was here, which is incredible on this Jordan 1 box. It looks amazing. Uh, me and Osman always say if we're ever gonna do a Jordan collaboration, we've got to have this on the top of the box. That's incredible. And then look at this. I don't have a video on the main channel about these guys, but we're dropping one on the Apothecary YouTube channel, which if you guys want to check out, there will be a link in the description below. But this is a custom with a bunch of different Apothecary sock designs painted on different parts of the shoe. It's absolutely incredible. In that video on the Apothecary channel, we go over all the different parts of the shoe and all the different details. Like you've got Hess's collaboration right there. You've got, oh, it's Teddy collaboration right up there at the top. You got Kaisa's on the side. You've got uh, another Hess Kicks and a Roscoe right there. Monsieur Banana. Apothecary was here. All this crazy, crazy stuff on this shoe. This shoe is absolutely insane, and unfortunately, it is gonna have to live at the Apothecary office because the guys at the office 
would get mad at me if I kept it here. So I'm gonna film some B-roll of it here and uh, you guys can see the full video on this shoe in the uh, description below. And also if you guys wanna check out the Kick Fix, huge thank you to him for creating this incredible custom. Can't thank you enough. This is truly, truly an amazing, amazing pair of sneakers. So awesome and probably one of the most special boxes that I've ever received. This feels like such a letdown for the last special box that I have, or at least that I know of, because I was using it to hold up my recorder, and after those crazy customs, this is just gonna be like a normal pair of sneakers, but this is sort of a, uh, I don't know, a big plastic tube that Adidas sent me years ago that had the, I believe the Alpha Bounce in them. I think they're still in there, right there. And I actually use this to hold up my uh, Zoom H8, which is ridiculous, but it's a really cool package. It's like sort of a pedestal, so I use it for that in the studio. But there you go, the last special box, at least that I know of. If I find any other ones, or I think of any other ones before I finish this video, I'll show them to you. Oh, there is one more, there is one more. Hold on. So this right back here is actually a concrete Jordan 1 outsole. It's this concrete Jordan 1 box for the, I believe the Jordan 1 Flyknit, literally made of concrete. I got this back in 2017, and inside you had the Jordan 1 Bread Flyknit. Maybe it was 2016, when did these first release? It is, 2017, these first released in 2017. So, it came with its special packaging. I've had this in the background of my studio, I think since 2017, since I first got these, because the Jordan 1 is my favorite sneaker of all time, and uh, the fact that Jordan Brand sent me this crazy concrete box, I had to display it, because it's sick. And this is one of those situations where the packaging that held the shoes is actually way cooler than the shoes themselves. The shoes are fine. I love the Bread Jordan 1. It's my favorite sneaker of all time. The Flyknit version, eh, not that great, but the packaging, at least this special packaging, is incredible. And kind of heavy, too. That actually reminds me that I've got this insane grail coming in next week. I'm not kidding when I say it's a pair of sneakers that I've literally always wanted, and uh, I'm finally going to be able to own it. And if you guys want to find out what it is, make sure to click that subscribe button right there, and hit the notification bell so you guys can be notified right when that video comes out, because it should come out in the next probably week or so, so stay tuned for that. But next up, why don't we talk about some of the sneakers that I've designed, because you've heard me talk about these sneakers a million times. I've made tons of videos on them, but I've had some signature sneakers with a couple different brands. The first is the We Are Underdogs Seth Fowler Origin that came in a couple different colors. You've got the OG color, which I've worn a bunch. You've got the Asphalt color right here. You've got Jason Negrito's colorway right here, which he actually designed the black one as well. He took my silhouette and made it just super, super dope. You've got the What The Colorway, which Jason Negrito Diaz also collaborated with me on, and then of course the Vittorio Ravens Colorway, which is more of a dressed up shoe. Now, I love all of these sneakers. I think they all came out really well. They're super high quality. I like the way that they look. The problem is, is that the brand We Are Underdogs kind of disappeared out of nowhere, and uh, it really caused some issues, and I ended up uh, refunding everyone who bought a pair of sneakers and didn't receive their sneakers. Um, and I'm so sorry if you were one of those people. That sucks. I honestly don't know what happened with that brand. I went out to visit them in Portugal, and uh, everything seemed cool. And then on the final sneaker, which let me show you guys that, the Granite Colorway, which was the next sneaker that was supposed to drop as part of the Seth Fowler We Are Underdogs collaboration. I love this runner. I think it's super clean. Um, but We Are Underdogs just kind of disappeared and screwed a couple people out of um, their money for sneakers. Uh, if you were one of those people, shoot me an email, business at sethfowlermedia.com. Send me your invoice number, your receipt, and all that sort of good stuff. I believe I've gotten everyone back, at least from what I can tell, based on the reports that I had from We Are Underdogs before they went under. So I did it personally because I just didn't feel right telling you guys to buy some sneakers and then you tried to buy them and then you never got the product. That sucks. So I'm really sorry if you were one of those people. And it sucks because it really put a stain on one of my favorite things that I had ever done or been a part of. And uh, I mean, now I've got a lot of other things that I'm proud of, like Apothecary and my YouTube channel and my family and all sorts of good stuff like that. But that was a thing that I was really excited about and proud of. And now in my head, it's kind of like ruined. So that's... <laughs> that sounded like way worse than it is. Uh, I don't know, it just sucks, man. It sucks to get screwed over. But that was a few years ago, and a few years before that, I collaborated with Planters Peanuts and VaynerMedia, Gary Vaynerchuk's VaynerMedia, on this pair of Planters Peanut shoes. It was a limited release. It was a pretty wild looking sneaker designed to look like the shoe that Mr. Peanut would wear. So that's why it's got Mr. Peanut's face on it. I, I don't know, I don't know if I'd wear a sneaker with my face on it, but Mr. Peanut does, so there you go. And then finally, before we round off the sneakers that I've personally designed, I've got a couple 3D printed shoes, which are not exactly the same thing, but they're still sneakers that I made videos on and designed. So the first is this pair of, um, I don't know what to call it, clogs. This is a pair of shoes that I printed, I think back in 2021 or 22, I'm not sure exactly when. Wore it to SneakerCon. I designed it completely from scratch, uh, as you could probably tell, because I was using SolidWorks, which is not a program made to design shoes in. Um, but here it is, kinda looks like a speedboat. But no matter how ugly this shoe is, and yes, it is ugly, it is part of the reason why that video is the most viewed video on my channel. So there's a there's a small place in my heart for this shoe. Not a big place, because it's ugly, but it did create probably my best video. Next, you've got the Flame Shoe, which uh, was really just to promote the Flame Socks that we dropped with Apothecary. 
The video bombed, but I still had fun with it, so that's great. I'm still a little salty about that video because it took me like a week to do. Another shoe I designed, dubbed the Black Vaders by someone at SneakerCon, is a pair of shoes that I just designed for the fun of it, uh, just to wear to SneakerCon and make a video about this shoe. Probably the best overall comfort when it comes to 3D printed shoes, at least that I made at home. Um, the shoe features a uh, 3D printed insole, and then of course a 3D printed upper, and it's pretty soft on foot. It's actually not too bad. I also made it way too big because the blue shoe that I had that I wore to SneakerCon was way too small, and I got crazy blisters for the next like week after that, so I made this shoe way bigger so that when I could wear it at SneakerCon, I wouldn't have any foot issues like I did with the first shoe. And then we've got the Glow in the Dark 3D printed Yeezy Slides, which was a pretty wild experiment, but it turned out pretty well. And then finally, we've got a prototype of the shoe that I designed for Braille. Now this is not the final shoe, as you can tell by all the printing errors on it, and the fact that it doesn't have that red insole. But that video is probably the most fun I've ever had making a YouTube video, because I actually designed a skateboarding shoe from scratch and took it out to San Francisco to have the guys from Braille Skateboarding skate it. If you guys haven't heard of their channel, they are incredibly talented dudes. They skate everything. That was like sort of their main thing, where they skated like glass skateboards and iPads and stuff like that. It's like pro skaters skating on stuff that shouldn't be skated on. It's awesome. So I offered to make them a pair of 3D printed shoes from scratch. They said yes, flew out there, and just had a blast making that video. So if you guys want to check that video out, there will be a link in the description below. That is probably the video that I spent the most money on and got the least return. Like, the video didn't do very well, but it was a huge blast, and uh, I would do it again. Continuing on with some brands that I have less pairs of in my collection than other brands, and also, I guess, keeping in the 3D printed sneaker trend, we've got this pair of Zellerfeld Atreon. So this is a pair of shoes completely 3D printed from the ground up in Germany. It was designed by someone in the United States. Atreon, I believe, is the brand. Really, really awesome shoe. If you guys haven't checked out Zellerfeld, they make some really incredible stuff. And actually, I've got another pair of Zellerfelds in my collection. Collection. It's this Zellerfeld Heron 1. This is a collaboration with Heron Preston and it feels amazing on foot. It's crazy how a 3D printed shoe can have so many different feels even though it's all printed out of the same material. Like the bottom part of the shoe is really stiff and provides a lot of support but the top part almost feels like a fabric. All the shoes that I print at home are like one fifth of the coolness of the shoes that Zellerfeld makes. And actually I do have another 3D printed pair of shoes in my collection. It's the A6 ActiBreeze 3D. I think it's the official name of these shoes. So these are a 3D printed slide. It looks amazing and it feels incredible on feet and I wear these all the time although they are very, very large. Continuing on with ASICs, we've got the ASICs Gel Light 3. This is a collaboration with Sneaker Freaker and with Atmos. Super clean. Definitely a brighter ASICs Gel Light sneaker, but very easy to wear. Next up, we've got Marquez Brownlee sneaker, or MKBHD sneaker. This is the Adams 251. Actually a really solid and very comfortable sneaker. I think some sneakerheads were giving it more hate than it deserved because sneakerheads are fickle. They like Jordans, and they like some Adidas, and that's about it. Another YouTuber brand that I have a couple pairs of is No Two Ways. Huge shout out to them for sending me so many sneakers over the years. I have a bunch, but they're all at the Apothecary office because we use them for photo shoots. I wear them around the office, and also some of my uh, <coughs> employee friends steal them from me. Huge thank you to No Two Ways for sending these out. These are pretty wild shoes and I have yet to wear them so I'm excited to throw these on. I love foam sneakers or foam clogs so this is one that I'm definitely excited about checking out. Another cool pair is this pair of John Geiger. I believe 002 Lowe's. This is the uh, Martell collaboration. Another pair from another content creator, Jake Polino. We've got this really cool pair of Kizo Kicks and this really nice yellow suede material. I absolutely love it. It's a very, very clean sneaker. Shout out to, uh, to Jake for doing some really incredible stuff when it comes to customs and also creating his own brand. I've done it myself. It's very difficult and uh, they're doing a great job over at Kizo, so shout out to them. Next up is the Mosh Centralia Runner. He does some of the most amazing customs in the world. I love his work, and uh, he released his own sneaker. And I think he actually just dropped the second version of his sneaker, so that's really exciting. I haven't checked them out yet, but I definitely want to. And it just goes to show that he's not just an incredible sneaker customizer, he's also an incredible sneaker designer. Next up is a custom pair of Dunks designed for Nick the Real by The Remade. It's got this beautiful red suede and this really nice tumbled white leather, and then the other side of the pair is the reverse, so the red areas are white, the white areas are red. You get the idea. After that, we've got the Factory Lab Night Runner. Now, I've had two colorways of this shoe, the white colorway and the black colorway. The white colorway is actually over at the apothecary office. I've left a lot of shoes there. But either way, Factory Lab was started by Omar Bailey, who used to work with Yeezy, and he's done a lot of amazing stuff in his sneaker design career. This shoe was actually designed by Vidit Singh, and is a really, really cool, modern-looking foam sneaker. Next up, we've got a pair of Vessies. Yes, pair of Vessies. I know this is a sneaker channel, and you don't usually see Vessies on sneaker channels, but I was so interested in Vessie because I had seen so many different YouTube ads about Vessies, and I just expected them to not live up to the hype, but then I bought a pair and I tried it out and I'm like, this is actually a pretty decent shoe. So I've been sticking with it. I've actually grabbed a couple pairs of Vessies. They're great shoes for walking around in the rain if you don't want to wear your high heat. They look good, they're comfortable, and hey, you know what? It's a brand worth checking out. I know it's surprising, but I do genuinely like Vessies a lot. Next up is the A Few Store Deodora collaboration. This shoe is very clean. It's this beautiful, like, rusty pink color with this nice white tumbled leather upper. I think the shoe is amazing. Huge thank you to A Few Store for sending this pair my way. Okay, so I'm trying to think of where to go to from here because I think I've covered all of these smaller brands. Now we've got like big brands like Nike, Adidas, 
New Balance. Let's do Timberland and Vans. So this one I'm sure you've seen in previous sneaker collection videos. This is the staple Timberland collaboration. Very wearable. Colorways you wouldn't usually think of when you think of uh, winter boots. Got sort of a Halloween vibe to it, but great shoe all around. I've worn it a bunch. Next up, getting into Vans, we've got the Vans Half Cab. This is the 30th anniversary version 1992 it is the 30th anniversary because this shoe is the same age as me so technically this shoe is 31 years old now or at least a silhouette next up is the vans bodega chuck amid this is a collaboration between one of my favorite boutiques bodega and of course vans and then finally we've got a sneakerheads essential in the collection we've got the vans old school if you don't have a pair of old schools i definitely recommend picking them up because they're like 60 bucks it's a shoe that can go with really anything and uh it doesn't really matter if you beat it up because you can grab a new pair or they even look better beat up so if you don't have a pair of old schools definitely grab one because it's one of those essential sneakers that everyone needs to have in their collection. Next up, let's get into Puma. We've got the Mellow Ball 0.2 or the Mellow 0.2. I'm not exactly sure what the name of the shoe is. This is the gray and orange colorway. This next sneaker from Puma is pretty wild. This is actually the MCM collaboration that never released. This is a sample pair. It's actually got gold on the tongue. I don't know if that's real gold, but look at that. That's pretty cool. I believe this silhouette is the Puma Cell and they just kind of put the MCM leather on the outside of the shoe and then gave it some MCM colors, but it's more of a uh, designery sort of vibe. Moving on to Reebok, we've got the V-Buck Classic Nylon. This is actually a sample pair from Gary Vaynerchuk, so huge shout out to Gary for sending this my way. The shoe is pretty wild. I love the fact that they changed out the branding on the side of the shoe to V-Buck instead of Reebok. After that, we've got the Iverson Question Mid. This is the uh, two-way colorway. The right shoe comes with a blue toe and the left shoe comes with a red toe. I'm a huge Iverson fan and obviously a Sixers fan, so it's nice to have a pair of very six specific Iverson shoes. I've worn these to a lot of games, but uh, I started wearing like higher heat shoes to Sixers games because they do this thing where it's like you get a free $100 gift card if you have the best sneakers there. I have yet to win it because a lot of people have really cool sneakers at the Sixers games, but um, actually there's one other pair of Reeboks I didn't even think about showing. Let me grab it really quick. So this is literally Shaq's shoe. This is a shoe that he signed at his Hall of Fame induction. This is actually his shoe size. It's not a shoe that I think he ever wore. This is the uh, not the giveaway, but the, the thing that they did at his Hall of Fame induction, you could like buy, you know, a signed thing from Shaq there. And this is what they did for his Hall of Fame induction because his shoes are obviously insane. I mean, look at them next to my torso. It's like my entire torso. This is a size, it's a US size 22. Let me grab a size nine to show you the difference. There you go, size nine versus size 22. Really crazy piece of Shaq memorabilia. I've tried it on. Doesn't fit. Maybe I should put it in the back of these videos. I don't know, I have like other signed stuff back here. I have this in my office. I don't know if I should move this back on the shelf somewhere. Let me know in the comment section down below. Speaking of weird oversized shoes, we've got the Big Red Boot by Mischief, a shoe that I don't think anyone expected to blow up the way that it did, and now it's probably one of the most iconic shoes that have released in this last decade, realistically. I mean, everyone knows this shoe. Probably one of the wildest, but most interesting shoe projects that I've seen in a very long time. And now they've got the Crocs collaboration, so uh, they're just keeping it going. Using that as a segue, we've got my most worn pair of slides in my collection. I guess maybe not as much as the Easy Slides, but this was the top slide on my top 10 slides of the year list. This is the Crocs Mellow Slide. Very comfortable, pretty simple, pretty clean looking, very easy to wear, but um, definitely worth checking out if you're looking for like an everyday slide. After that, we've got two different colorways. Uh, probably my favorite thing that Crocs has ever made, and that's the Salehi Bembry Pollux Crocs, a shoe which has taken the world by force, and they're finally releasing a bunch of colorways of these, and now you can actually walk into some stores and grab them for retail. It's not easy yet, but hopefully in the future. But now let's jump into Adidas with the Adidas Samba OG, which is quickly becoming one of the most popular sneakers on the market today. This shoe is a classic Adidas silhouette and uh, is taking the world by force, even more so than the Nike padded dunks, at least at this moment. Next is a new shoe from Adidas that I absolutely love, and that's the Adidas Infinity I don't remember what the name of the shoe is. The Adidas Crazy Infinity 2.5. So this shoe is sort of a modified version of the classic Adidas Kobe shoe. And I've gotta say, it's a dope looking sneaker. It's actually pretty comfortable. You do need to size up, but uh, I love the aesthetics of this shoe. After that, we've got another 3D printed shoe, the Adidas 40 Forward 2. This is their 3D printed midsole shoe. I have a lot of the 3D printed Adidas shoes, or I used to. I think I actually got rid of most of them. But a very wild looking sneaker because of this 3D printed midsole. And the way that it feels underfoot is, very difficult to describe. Like it really feels squishy, but it also propels you forward, which is exactly how they designed it. It's definitely a shoe that I'm excited about rocking. And I think I actually am gonna make a video where I 3D print a pair of running shoes and compare it to this shoe. So stay tuned for that. If you guys haven't yet, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. Of course, I've got a couple pairs of Adidas slides. I have so many slides around this house, it's ridiculous. I don't need any more, but I keep buying them. I know I already showed you one of my sample Pharrell Human Race NMDs, but I've got two more in two different colorways. They both have these sample tags, which is really cool. And they're both very clean colorways. And huge thank you to Adidas for sending these shoes my way. I 
really appreciate it. Another Adidas sample that I have is this Arizona collaboration on the Young One. Probably my favorite of the Arizona collab. I think this colorway is just super clean, super wearable, and it's not as busy as some of the other shoes. Like, some of the other shoes that dropped featured the green tea, I guess, uh, roses embroidered, all, not roses, cherry blossoms embroidered all over the top of the shoe, which actually made the top of the shoe very stiff. Next up, we've got another sample from Adidas. I didn't realize that all the promo pairs that they sent me were samples, or most of them. This is the Pharrell Human Race NMD. S1. This shoe, I think, dropped very quietly last year, and there really wasn't a lot of press about it, which is pretty wild, but it's got this almost like burlap feeling upper that's literally painted blue in the back. Not the easiest colorway to rock, but still grateful to have it. Next up is probably my favorite Adidas recent release, and that's the Bad Bunny Campus 80 in this tan colorway, and probably my favorite thing that Adidas has dropped all year. I love this shoe. But now let's get into some friends and family Adidas stuff. This is the Adidas Boost You Wear 2.0. This is the Ubik friends and family pair. Ubik is actually no longer a brand. They actually got bought by, I believe, Atmos, and now it's Atmos in Philadelphia. I think the standard pair was white with like a blue outsole, and then the Friends and Family colorway is black with a neon green outsole. After that is the Friends and Family Adidas NMD S1. This shoe is absolutely fire. They sent this to me like months before the NMD S1 first released, and I rocked it a bunch because I just love the silhouette. And this colorway, this FNF colorway, is crazy, crazy clean. It's sort of a green glow. Then we've got quite possibly my favorite pair of Adidas in my entire collection, and that is the Bodega Friends and Family Forum High. This shoe is is incredible. It literally only released to friends and family. There was never a bodega release, or at least a bodega forum release. There's only 333 pairs, and I got pair number 230. So huge thank you to Bodega for sending this my way. But now let's move on to Adidas Yeezy. And I've got a couple pairs of Yeezy slides. I've got the uh shoot, I don't remember what they're called. The brown Yeezy slides, the granite or the um, something slate blue, I don't remember. This is a recent release Yeezy slide. Thank you to Takeout for sending this pair my way. And then I also have the Onyx colorway. I don't know where it is. And honestly, this silhouette is probably my most worn silhouette in my collection. Between the brown pair and the black pair, I haven't worn this pair yet. I've probably worn these more than any other shoe in my collection, because I wear these every day, all day, just around the house, going to get the mail, going to the store. Unfortunately, they're not making them anymore, but they are worth picking up for resale. And again, if you want to grab any of these Yeezy slides, they are available through Express Ship on StockX. Oh, and I almost forgot the Adidas Yeezy 450 slide, a slide that I've been wearing so much, mainly out of convenience because it's right by my front door, but also because it's very comfortable underfoot, as comfortable as the standard Yeezy slides. And it's also got this very smooth footbed, which means it's easier to slide your foot in and out of, especially when you're rocking socks. And if you guys haven't checked out the latest Apothecary Flower Drop, you definitely should. Linked in the description below. Apothecary socks are my sock brand, and uh, in my opinion, we make the best socks ever. I know it's biased because it's <clears throat> my sock brand, but seriously, we make amazing socks. If you haven't checked out Apothecary, make sure to do that by clicking the link in the description below to our website, apothecary.com, or go to your local Zoomies, because we're in Zoomies as well. Another pair of Yeezys that I absolutely love are the Yeezy Foam Runners. This is the Ararat colorway. Unfortunately, it's the only colorway of the Foam Runners that I have at the moment. Honestly, one of the most, I wouldn't say influential, but iconic sneakers that was released in 2020. Actually, it probably was one of the most influential shoes that was dropped in 2020. Next up, we've got the only pair of 350s left in my collection. It's the Beluga 1.0s, the classic 350. I actually don't wear 350s a lot anymore, and that's why I only have one pair left in my collection, because I really don't wear them that much. But if I was going to keep one, it was going to be this pair, the original 350. I mean, this is a reflective colorway, so it's not the original Beluga. And then finally, we've got my favorite pair of Adidas Yeezys outside of the foam runners and the slides, and that's the Yeezy 700 Wave Runner. I pre-ordered this pair. I've talked about it so many times, but I pre-ordered this exact pair back in 2017. Everyone hated it, and uh, another shoe that the hype just got to people, and I get it, because the shoe is awesome, it's incredibly comfortable, and it's like a wild-looking dad shoe, back when wild-looking dad shoes were not it. Is that all the Adidas that I got? I think that's all the Adidas. Let's move into New Balance. So this first pair, I actually haven't really unboxed yet. Well, I have unboxed quickly for an Instagram story, but I haven't really checked out. And that is the Bodega New Balance 610. <laughs> I didn't know the name of the silhouette, but it's the Bodega New Balance 610. This is a hiking shoe for sure. I love hiking. I needed a new pair of hiking shoes, and this is a pair that I'm going to rock. Actually, speaking of New Balance hiking shoes, this is also a Bodega collaboration. This pair is the X-Racer from, I believe, 2020 or 2021. I've hiked in this shoe a bunch. I can't say enough good things about New Balance hiking shoes. If you guys haven't tried them, you definitely need to, but very, very clean sneaker, and Bodega, again, did their thing on this collaboration. It makes sense why I love them so much, because everything that they drop, I love. So, uh, shout out to Bodega. Once again, one of the many shout outs to them in this video. After that, we've got the New Balance 2002R in this very clean blue and gray colorway. Very simple, but very wearable. Of course, we've got some New Balance basketball with the New Balance two-way V3, I believe, in this blue and green colorway. Is this a V3? I feel like such a poser not knowing these New Balance names, but this is a two-way V3. <laughs> The only shoe that you probably know with a whistle on it, the Salehi 574 is. Also, probably the coolest looking 574 New Balance has ever made. Another fire Salehi sneaker, the New Balance 2002R Salehi Bembry in the original orange colorway. Super clean, super wearable. 
wear the shoe all the time. Then we've got the most recent 990. This is a 990 V6 in the classic Castle Rock gray colorway. I do want to grab the Action Bronson colorways, but I haven't pulled the trigger on those yet. Also, if you haven't tried this shoe out yet, you're missing out. The shoe is incredibly comfortable and it looks awesome, even in this gray colorway. It's just such a wearable sneaker. Of course, we've got the Protection Pack 2002R. This colorway used to go for like $600 and now I think you can grab it for like $250. But, but even though this shoe isn't going for that crazy resale anymore, the materials on the shoe are ridiculous. So if you haven't checked it out yet, you definitely should. Then we've got my first pair of New Balance 550s. This is the ALD collaboration in the green and yellow colorway. An incredible shoe. If you guys haven't tried the 550s, I've said this about so many of the New Balance sneakers in today's video, but that's because if you guys haven't tried New Balance yet, you are missing out. They make amazing stuff. And this ALD collab, whew, this is heat, man. And actually, another ALD New Balance collaboration, which is a more recent pickup. I think I grabbed this back in May. You've got the ALD New Balance 1906R that comes in the classic ALD green. Absolutely love this shoe, wear it all the time. And then finally, we've got my favorite pair of New Balances that I've ever owned, and that's the Joe Fresh Goods 992s in this beautiful anatomy of a heart colorway. This shoe is incredible. This is like one of the hottest New Balances out there, not only because it's on the 992 and it's a Joe Fresh Goods collaboration, but the colorway is ridiculously clean. This shoe is so wearable. And even though this shoe is worth like two grand, at least the last time that I checked, I still wear it all the time. I mess it up, I scuff it up, just because it's such an awesome sneaker, and awesome sneakers are meant to be worn. So if you have sneakers in your collection that you're too afraid to wear, get rid of them or wear them. Okay, so now we get into Nike and Jordan brand. The two brands that I have by far the most pairs of. Let's start things off with Nike. So originally I was going to try and go in some specific order for Nike, but I decided, you know what, everything's just kind of all over this room, so I'm just going to pick and grab and hopefully make sure I show you guys everything. I know I've missed a bunch of sneakers already. I'm sure there are sneakers in this room that I, I should know about that I don't know about, but that's just because I have way too many sneakers. I have a problem, and <laughs> I guess let's just start things off with... um. With these, the Nike Dunk High Be True to Your Schools in purple and black. This is my Ravens game day shoe. I wear this every Sunday that there's a Ravens game. Unlike the Air Jordan 1 Core Purples that I had a couple years back, these are not cursed. In fact, every time I've worn these, we've won. So I'm gonna continue to wear these. Also, I don't believe in luck. So I guess just Lamar is killing it. So shout out to Lamar. And also the rest of the Ravens, Patrick Queen, uh, Mark Andrews, OBJ, Zay Flowers, they're all killing it. Sticking with Nike Dunks, we've got the Syracuse Nike Dunk Lows in this very clean white and orange colorway. Definitely a heavily worn pair of Dunks in my collection. Next up, we've got probably the most worn pair of dunks in my entire collection and that's the Phillies Nike SB Dunk Lows. The reason I wear this pair so much is because one, I live in Philly and two, because I just like the colorway. It's super easy to match with, super easy to rock. Now the suede on the upper of the shoe has gotten really dirty because I've worn this pair so much. It's gotten wet like a million different times. Uh, <laughs> I spent like $300 on this shoe so I probably should be taking better care of it. But again, wear your sneakers and this is a pair that I've worn so much and I will continue to wear until it's completely beat. Of course, we just added the orange lobsters to the collection in the beginning of this video. Shout out once again to StockX and Express ship for sponsoring today's video. And then we get to what I think is the final pair of Nike Dunk Lows in my entire collection. I've had a bunch of pairs, but I've gotten rid of a bunch of pairs. This is the Off-White Nike Dunk Low UNLV. And this pair was actually given to me by Big Boy Chang in the Philippines, which is amazing. Thank you so much, man, if you're watching this video. Another shoe that I just recently picked up were the Nike Mac Attacks in the OG gray and black colorway. I have yet to wear this pair. I literally just bought it. It just came in the mail like two or three days ago. Super excited to see this pair on foot. And I also wanted to grab this pair, not only because it's my first pair of Mac Attacks, but also because I want to compare it to the Travis Scott Mac Attacks when they finally release either later this year or next year. Kind of a random shoe, but the shoe that I consider the most comfortable shoe in my collection, we've got the Nike Invincible Run 3. And it's a shoe that I wear all the time because of how stupid comfortable this Zoom X foam is in the midsole. It's like almost too soft. It feels like it's a cheat code because you're just kind of bouncing along as you're walking. It's ridiculous. Of course, we've got some AF1 Lows and Triple White. This is actually the certified lover boy knocked the colorway of the shoe. I don't have any standard AF1 Lows and White at the moment just because I feel like why do I need them when I've got this pair? The material quality is so much better. So this is my go-to AF1. This next shoe is sort of a Nike shoe, but also sort of a Jordan sneaker. This is the Nike Jordan Airships in this orange colorway. This was the shoe that Michael Jordan wore before the Air Jordan 1 came out. This is also the shoe that featured the band colorway that actually did get banned by the NBA. Seriously, it's an awesome shoe and it does not get the love that it deserves. So I'm so happy that this shoe is back. Next up, we've got the Foam Posits in Metallic Red. These released earlier this year. And this is the first time that I've actually owned the Metallic Red Foam Posits. I grew up in Baltimore, so Foam Posits were huge, but I never had this colorway, so excited to finally have it, and I've been wearing it not a lot, but a decent amount. As much as you probably should be wearing foam posits. And actually, earlier this year, I picked up one of my grails, which does happen to be a foam posit, and that's the Supreme Nike Foam Posit 1s in this black colorway. 
This shoe is incredible. I used to do so many custom sneakers based on this pair of foam posits, and to actually have them now is amazing. I grabbed these at Second Street in Japan, which makes the story even more incredible, and I got them for like $300, which is amazing. And it came with a box. Another semi-recent pickup is this pair of Wolf Grey Nike Roshi 1s from the Nike outlet. This shoe was huge in 2014, 2015, and uh, now no one cares about it, but Nike brought it back for whatever reason and seemed to only release it at the outlet. One of my favorite releases of the year is the Nike Air Max 1 Big Bubble in the OG red and white colorway, and this shoe is genuinely significantly more comfortable than the standard Air Max 1 because, first of all, they changed up the foam in the midsole, which is a little bit soft and also the air unit is significantly bigger. So definitely worth checking out if you haven't yet. Next up is another pair of Off-Whites. This is the Off-White Air Force Ones with graffiti on the side. I believe this shoe released exclusively at Farfetch. It's a pretty wild looking pair of sneakers. I don't know if I'm ever gonna rock this. One, because I don't love the spikes on this shoe, but two, because it's not really my style personally. Not saying it's a bad sneaker, just not something that I would rock on a regular basis. After that, we've got the unknown Nike LeBrons. These just released earlier this year. Obviously, this is a collaboration between Nike LeBron and the store Unknown. It's a a really high quality looking pair of LeBrons. Like it features this beautiful tan suede on the upper. Of course you got the double Nike swooshes. Awesome sneaker. I actually really love this sneaker a lot and I plan to wear the shoe casually. Next up we've got another gift. This is actually from Big Boy Chang and this is the Supreme Nike Lunar Flyknit Ones. A shoe which was incredibly hyped at the time that it released and now no one even really knows about it but it's a shoe that I always wanted and never thought that I'd be able to get and then Big Boy gave me this pair out of the kindness of his heart which is amazing so thank you so much. Literally I didn't even know he had it. I didn't ask for it. He just gave it to me, which is amazing. And uh, it's an incredibly comfortable and really solid looking sneaker. It's got this sort of hidden Supreme branding on there. It's awesome, man. This shoe does not get the love that it deserves in 2023, let me tell you. It's crazy. Next up, we've got the Kobe 8 Pro Tro Halos in this triple wide colorway. This was actually a sneakers app win. The first time I've won on the sneakers app in probably years, and I thought that it was because I spent so much money at the Nike outlet and they scanned my code and it said I had a lot of purchases through Nike, but I don't think that's the case because I haven't won anything else since this shoe release. So I guess it's only been like a month since this shoe release, but still, still really excited to have this shoe, but I just can't see myself wearing it because as soon as I wear it, it's gonna get crazy dirty. And uh, I like wearing my shoes, as you guys can see, until they get completely beat. And I don't think this is a shoe that's gonna look great, very dirty. The other pair of Kobe's that I got in the collection currently are the Kobe 6 Pro Tro Grinches. An incredible shoe, a pair that uh, I always wanted to have when it first released, and um, I'm never gonna get rid of this pair because I just love this sneaker. It's like a grail to me. And so, although it's not the original pair, it's, uh, in my opinion, just as good. Continuing on with some Air Maxes, we've got the Pata Nike Air Max 1s. This shoe is an incredible collaboration. They didn't do too much to the side panel of the sneaker other than change the shape of the panel itself, but it really, really changes up the look of the shoe and makes it feel special and different. Another incredibly popular Air Max collaboration is the Sean Witherspoon Air Max 197s. This shoe released back in 2017, I believe. You can't really say too much about the sneaker that hasn't already been said. Definitely the shoe that put Sean Witherspoon on the map in terms of sneaker design. Obviously he had round two the store, but this shoe was like what made him who he is today. And not only did he pick the colors in the upper of the shoe and the materials, he also decided to make the upper of the shoe a 97 and the bottom half of the shoe an Air Max 1. So it's like a huge mashup of shoes. And unlike a lot of mashups, this is even better than I think either of the originals. It's a great looking sneaker. Next up, we've got another pair of the Off-White Air Force Ones, this time in the Volt colorway. It's a pair that I first grabbed in the Philippines for my wife, saw her wearing them, and then I got really jealous and had to buy myself a pair too. And uh, it's crazy dirty. I wear this pair a lot. I wear a lot of my shoes, which I'm actually proud of. I had a goal last year to wear every pair in my collection, and I think I've worn like 90% of them, which is more than I think I've ever worn before. That's like really pathetic to say out loud, but it's true. As a sneaker collector, it's it's tough, man. If you have, you know, hundreds of sneakers, it's tough to wear all of them. So I'm proud of the fact that I've worn most of them. And then we get to my second favorite off-white sneaker of all time, the off-white Nike Prestos in the OG colorway. This shoe is absolutely incredible. It's stupid comfortable. I've worn this pair to the ground, well, not to the ground. It's still very wearable. And because of the way the shoe is designed or deconstructed. You can wear the shoe a bunch before it starts to look raggedy. And I actually grabbed this shoe from StockX when it first released for I think like $1,200, which at the time seemed a little bit high because everyone was hyped on these shoes. But now looking back on it, I got a steal. Seriously, I love this shoe. It's absolutely incredible. Virgil Abloh, may he rest in peace was one of the most talented designers out there when it comes to streetwear and fashion. He was an incredible person, and this shoe is just an example of how good he was at what he did. So a hiking shoe that I literally just found today in my closet for the first time in years is the Nike ACG, uh, what is it called? Something dog, I don't remember the name of this shoe, but I wore this a bunch back in 2017 when the shoe first came out, and then I lost it, and then I literally just found it for the first time in like two years today. So I wanted to show you guys this shoe today before I probably donate it, because I've got a lot of hiking shoes now, so I don't know if I need this sneaker anymore, but I hiked in, 
Ireland in the shoe. I've hiked in Portugal in this shoe. The shoe has been around the world with me, so maybe I'll keep it. I don't know. Not the most exciting shoe in the world, but definitely a sneaker that has a lot of memories for me. All right, so at this point, let's get into Jordans because I probably have the most pairs of Jordans out of any other category of sneakers in my collection. And the pairs that I'm gonna show you guys first are the pairs on the $20 sneaker collection Jordan clock. So let me grab it. It's very heavy, but I wanna show you guys the entire collection. So I gotta show you the entire collection. So let me get Here's the stupid heavy clock. So this clock is made up of OG Jordan colorways from 12 all the way around to one. You've got everything. You've got the lost and found ones. You've got the OG twos. You've got the fire red threes. You've got, hold on, I have to list it up for this. You've got the fire red fours. You've got the fire red fives. I have to put it down, I have to put it down. Infrared sixes. You've got the cardinal sevens, playoff eights, playoff nines. You've got the steel gray tens, bread elevens, and of course, the flu game 12. So that's the Jordan clock, and uh, I'm gonna lift it up and show you guys once again. Hold on. So a lot of those shoes I actually have doubles of. I have three pairs of the Lost and Found ones because I love that shoe, it's incredible. I'm not gonna show you guys all three pairs because there's no reason to see them. I've got two pairs of the Flu Game 12s. I've got this pair that we got from a thrift store and then another pair that I bought brand new off StockX. I've got multiple pairs of the Bread 11s, same thing. I've got this pair which I got from a thrift store and then another pair that I bought brand new. I've actually only got one pair of Cardinal 7s. So I have this brand new pair that I bought off the sneakers app as part of the series and I put one side of it on the clock, the other side is in the shelf. I have another pair of Fire Red 4s, which I wear all the time, so this is a pair that I got from, I believe, was it a sneaker event? I've got multiple pairs of the OG 2s because I love this sneaker. This pair was brand new, I believe, from the Sneakers app. And then we've also got the thrifted pair of Fire Red 3s. I do have a brand new pair or a pair that I bought new off the Sneakers app as well. So that is the Jordan clock. All the sneakers that I didn't mention just now are pairs that I only have one pair of. I do hope to get a second pair of playoff eights, the brand new pair, whenever I can. I, I missed out on the Sneakers app, but I'm gonna try and grab a pair when they drop again on the 30th. And honestly, if I can't grab them on the 30th, I'm just gonna buy them off StockX. So that's the plan. But I guess I should go through the Jordans that I didn't already mention, and let's start things off with uh, some Jordan 5s. I'm actually not gonna do that because I don't know why I'd start with the Jordan 5s out of all the Jordans. I'm gonna start with the Jordan 30s. So this is actually the first pair of sneakers I ever reviewed on this channel. In fact, my review of this shoe was the very first video I ever posted on this channel. And uh, I don't have the original pair that I used for the video, but I do have this pair, which I bought, I think, uh, last November when I hit a million subscribers. I just wanted to grab it because it's kind of sentimental to me because it's the first shoe that I ever checked out on the channel. Kind of a sentimental purchase. It's not like a sneaker that anyone really wants, except for me, but uh, it's cool nonetheless. Another cool higher number Jordan is this pair right here. This is a size 17 player exclusive Air Jordan 28. Now this pair I actually found at the thrift store for $10. This uh, was probably one of the craziest episodes of the $20 sneaker collection. It's actually from the first episode of season three. And if you haven't seen that episode yet, I definitely recommend it. There will be a link at the top of the screen and in the description below. Season three is gonna be absolutely crazy. I'm trying to complete the entire Off-White the 10 collection. So it's gonna take a minute, but it's gonna be worth it. And this PE I found, like I said, for $10 at the thrift store. And I ended up uh, sleuthing it up to try and figure out whose pair it was. And it's actually Kennedy Meek's pair. And he actually won an NCAA championship for UNC see which is wild and this is his Jordan brand classic PE. So I messaged him on Instagram, I showed him the pair. He said, how did you even find that? And I said, I have no idea, it just showed up. Because it's got such a crazy story, I don't think I can ever sell it. I think I have to hold on to this pair because you don't really find a lot of PEs in thrift stores. It just doesn't happen. Sort of a Jordan, sort of not a Jordan. We've got these Jordan Russell Westbrook um, 0.1s, I think. But these shoes are really special because I had these shoes customized at a Jordan brand event by artist Jew working on projects. He actually customized this exact same shoe in this exact same style for Russell so Westbrook himself. Continuing down the list, we've got the Playoff 13s that just recently released. I had to grab a pair. I got them for retail off the sneakers app. I haven't worn this pair yet, but I do plan to wear it sooner than later. Next up, we've got the 2018, I think, Space Jam 11s? 2017? I'm not sure exactly which year it was. I've also got a pair of the upcoming Air Jordan 11 Gratitudes. Now, I already did a review on this pair, but I'm actually giving this pair away, so it's not really staying in the collection, but I wanted to show you guys just because it's an awesome pair of sneakers. It doesn't come out till December, so if you guys are interested in this shoe, make sure to check out my full review on my channel. Next up, up is a crazy pair of PEs. This is the Air Jordan 8 Oregon Duck PEs. I won these in my size, size 9, for I think like $1,100 or something like that. This shoe is a ridiculous colorway, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not like a huge fan of like a bunch of different greens all in one shoe. This is probably one of the rarest shoes in my entire collection, just because I think there's like maybe 150 pairs or something of this particular style PE. And uh, I, I don't know how many size 9s there are, maybe like four, five. And it's also the only Oregon Duck PE that I have. And you guys know Oregon Ducks. They're obviously a 
big Jordan school, so uh, it's really cool to have these. Moving into the Jordan 5s, we've got the Off-White 5s, the OG colorway. Honestly, one of my favorite pairs of 5s ever because of how comfortable they are, and they actually removed a lot of the padding in the upper of the shoe, so it's a lot more flexible, and it also fits a little bit better. Like, I grabbed a size 8.5, I'm usually a size 9, but the 8.5 fit perfect. It was like just the right amount of snugness because I got rid of a lot of that padding, and it's like just, it's almost like a sock-like pair of 5s. It doesn't make sense, but it is, and it looks amazing. And again, Virgil did his thing on this shoe, so one of my favorite off-white sneakers ever, actually, so. Love it. Next up is another crazy pair of fives. I actually really love Air Jordan fives. Like this is the Dornbecker fives. This is actually a sample pair of the Dornbecker fives. I think it's a promo sample, which means that it was sent out to promote the actual release. It's not like an actual sample sample. I mean, it is a sample, but it's not like a um, a production sample. This is a sample sent out to like a, a news outlet or something like that to promote the shoe. But regardless, sample pair of Dornbecker fives. I've worn this pair a decent amount because I love this shoe. I, I couldn't not wear it. And uh, I spent a good amount of money on it. So I felt like I had to wear it. I know it seems like a keep going back and forth on samples, but a lot of samples that I get sent, I don't wear because like they're directly from the brand. Something like this, it's a promo sample that I bought. I don't feel as guilty wearing, so I rock this pair and I love it. Probably one of the best fives out there and the story behind it is um, is sad, but a really good story to check out. And then finally, we've got the Tokyo Fives. These Jordan Fives were released exclusively at the opening of the Tokyo 23 store in Japan. I don't think that store is still open. I think they opened a new version of the store, either down the street or in a different part of, of Tokyo. But either way, the Tokyo Fives are one of the most coveted pairs of Air Jordan 5s, and I got my pair for free at ComplexCon. And there's actually a whole vlog on that, so if you guys want to check it out, I think it was like 2018 or 2019 that I got this shoe. So yeah, crazy shoe from 2011, and I had to wear it out of the event, so it has been worn. Moving on to Air Jordan 4s, I already showed you guys the Fire Red 4s, or at least one of the Fire Red 4s. I also have a pair of White Cement 4s. This shoe is incredible. This is the 2016 pair. I've worn this shoe a bunch. I wish they would just retro this shoe. It's a fire shoe. We need to have more pairs, especially now that 4s are as popular as they are. One of my favorite releases of the year and a shoe that I'm seriously considering doubling up on is the Nike SB Air Jordan 4s. In my opinion, it's the sneaker of the year, at least right now. The most comfortable pair of 4s I've ever worn. They actually remove the air unit in the forefoot and somehow that makes it more comfortable. I don't understand it, but the colorway on this shoe is amazing. The materials are great. It's a skateboarding focused Air Jordan 4. Everything about it's awesome. You gotta check out StockX and grab a pair for yourself because this shoe is fire. Moving on to the Air Jordan 3, which is my second favorite Air Jordan silhouette. We've got the Black Cement 3s, which are my favorite Air Jordan 3 colorway. This is the 2018 Nike Air release. I love this sneaker, man. I wish I had doubled up. And because of my mistakes not doubling up on the Black Cement 3s, I did double up on the White Cement 3 reimagines because this shoe is just another excellent Air Jordan 3 release. It's not exactly the same as the original because it has the off-white features or accents on the midsole and also on the heel of the shoe, but it does feature the Nike Air. The quality is decent and it's a great looking shoe. So I had to grab two pairs. I actually might grab three. I, I don't know. I need to, I have a problem. Next up, we've got one of the best Air Jordan 3 releases of all time and it's the Amamanier Air Jordan 3s. This shoe is absolutely absolutely incredible, possibly the best Air Jordan 3 collaboration ever, and I would love to have a second pair of these, but I'm not paying $900 for that. Continuing on to the Air Jordan 2s, the two pairs that I have, I already showed you guys one of them, the OG Air Jordan 2s, but I also have the Off-White Air Jordan 2 Chicago Lows. This shoe actually released right before Virgil passed, so the price of this shoe did skyrocket, which was, at the time, a bummer, but it seems like it sort of leveled out now, so if you want a pair of these, you don't have to pay insane prices, but this shoe is a pretty big departure from anything he had done in the past. It features Michael Jordan's signature on the side of the shoe. It actually is designed to look like the pair that's in the Jordan archives. It's cracking from back in 19. 86. I think is when this shoe first released. It's a really crazy concept because they gave this shoe sort of a resin midsole that features all these cracking details. It's not a sneaker that I wear every day, but it's a shoe that I definitely like to break out here and there because I just love the concept. But now we get into my favorite sneaker silhouette of all time, the Air Jordan 1. And the first pair I'm gonna show you guys is the Air Jordan 1 85 in this, uh, shoot, what is the name of this colorway? Georgetown, that's what it is. The Georgetown Air Jordan 185s. And the reason I love this shoe so much is not just because of the colorway, it's also because it's cut like the original 19 1985 Air Jordan 1s. The shape of the shoe is different than the recent Air Jordan 1s, and the materials used on this shoe are significantly nicer. The leather is a little bit stiffer and thicker, but it's better quality leather overall, and when you wear in this shoe, it feels better on foot. And again, not to ruin the surprise of this pair of sneakers that I'm getting in the next couple days, but it is a grail. It's an Air Jordan 1 grail. And uh, let's just say, maybe I have some sneakers in my collection based off of that grill. I, I don't know. Seriously, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell if you haven't yet because that video is gonna be a banger. But next up, we've got the Royal Ones from 2017. An incredible sneaker that they're bringing back in this reimagined suede this year, which I think is dumb, but either way, awesome sneaker, I love to have it. Another retro of an OG Air Jordan 1. We've got the 2015, I believe, Black Toe Ones. I've also actually got, hold up, the low top version of the shoe, which I was gonna show you guys in a different part of the video, but I'm gonna show you guys now because it just makes sense. I obviously prefer the high top 
top version of the shoe, but this low top version is incredibly wearable because it's summer right now, or at least it was summer, and low top ones are super easy to rock in the summer. So I've been wearing this a bunch. This one I haven't worn that much because every time I think about throwing it on, I'm like, do I really want to break out this shoe for this occasion? Like, is this occasion important enough to break out the black toe ones? And it always is. It's always dumb. I always overthink things, but uh, I need to wear this shoe more because this shoe is fire. And actually, while we're on the topic of Air Jordan 1 lows, I've got the Air Jordan 1 low golf Chicago. Obviously, I've worn this pair a bunch. I've probably only been golfing like 20 times, but I've worn this almost every single time. I think I've only not worn it like once. It's just a great all around golf shoe. Like it's fire. I love wearing this in the course. It's comfortable. It's got the golf grip on the outsole. It's dope. And honestly, I probably will buy another pair of these probably in the same colorway when this pair gets two beat to rock. I mean, maybe I'll try the, the light blue colorway. I'm not sure, but this one, this is a, a winner, man. I love this shoe. Too bad my golf game sucks no matter what shoe I wear, but hey, at least I look good doing it. After that is my favorite silhouette and colorway of all time, the Bread Air Jordan 1s. This is a 2016 pair. I have a couple pairs of these on ice just because it's my favorite shoe of all time. And this pair from 2016 has been my go-to for years and it shows. Not much I can say about the sneaker that I haven't already said. I love it. Just the best sneaker ever. Literally the best sneaker ever. So I know I already showed you guys the Lost and Found ones. I have three pairs of that stupid shoe, but I love it. I also have a pair of the 2015 Chicago ones, which I have not worn that much just because Every time I thought about wearing it, like the same thing with the black toe ones, I just overthought it and then just didn't. But uh, I regret it because now I wear the Lost and Found ones all the time and I just never really threw these guys on. And personally, even though I love the Lost and Found ones, this 2015 pair is probably... I don't know, I think I like it a little bit better. Next up, we've got the Shattered Backboard ones. Unfortunately, I was only able to grab this pair in a size eight and a half, but I still rock it. It's still a great sneaker. Probably one of the best quality Air Jordan ones of all time, which is crazy to say, well, that's not true, of recent memory. And I thought that it was all myth. I thought that it was all rumor just because the shoe used tumbled leather, but then Rose Anvil opened it up on his channel and showed that it was actually relatively decent leather compared to standard Jordan ones. So that changed my mind on this shoe. I love the color blocking on this sneaker. Obviously, this is the jersey color that Michael Jordan was wearing when he shattered the backboard, but it's just a dope colorway. Next up, we've got the first Travis Scott Air Jordan 1s, the first Jordan 1s to feature this backwards Nike swoosh, a pair that I spent a decent amount on when I bought it from StockX years ago. And uh, I've worn it a decent amount, but not as much as I should. In fact, it's got like barely any heel drag. I should wear this shoe more. This is a fire sneaker. Not the best Travis Scott Air Jordan 1. We'll get to that in a second, but definitely one of the most iconic Air Jordan 1 collabs ever. Speaking of the best Travis Scott Air Jordan 1s, in my opinion, this is it. The Fragment Travis Scott Air Jordan 1 Lows. This is a triple collaboration. It's better than the high top version of the triple collaboration just because the color blocking is better, in my opinion. I wear this shoe so much just because the color blocking is amazing. I would love to have a pair of Fragment 1s but I'm probably never gonna have that shoe just because of how expensive it got. And this shoe is such a great consolation prize. And in my opinion, in some ways, a better looking shoe than that shoe because I think this cream added to this black and blue is just like the perfect touch of extra accent color. Next up, we've got the two OG Air Jordan 1 Union LA collaborations. We've got the Black Toes and the Storm Blues. I proposed to my wife in the Storm Blue colorway. Like the Travis Scott's, probably one of the most iconic Air Jordan 1 collaborations of all time. These first released back in 2018. And Union LA did this really cool thing where they actually hid these shoes at I think it was like a, a flea market or something and we're selling them for like 50 bucks or whatever and um, some people from complex walked by saw them and were like oh this can't be real and then just walked on by and it was like this really funny video and uh, I just I don't know I just I just love the marketing behind the shoe I love both of these sneakers too because they're so unique the fact that they stitched together the top half of the shoe to the bottom half of the shoe and it's two different colorways such a cool concept that had never been done before obviously now Jordan brand has kind of copied this concept a little bit with some other sneaker releases and Union LA has dropped more Union LA Air Jordan one collaborations which in my opinion hit nowhere near as hard as these did these are incredible shoes but yeah some of my favorite sneakers in my collection and some of my favorite collaborations of all time continuing on with air jordan one collaborations we've got the off-white air jordan one unc's this shoe is a really wild looking collaboration first of all it comes in the unc colorway second of all it was designed by one of the greatest sneaker designers of all time virgil abloh definitely a pair that i'd like to wear more often and at this point if you're a long time viewer of the channel you know what shoe is next and that of course is the off-white air jordan one chicago signed by virgil abloh I had a chance to meet him at a Nike event back in 2017, and I had a chance to have him sign my pair of Off-White Chicago's, which I got for retail, by the way. I, I had this incredible interview with him. I got a chance to actually sit down with him for about 10 minutes and talk to him about design and his process, and it was incredible. I actually won a raffle on the sneakers. It wasn't really a raffle. I won a competition on the sneakers app where you wrote an essay to say why you'd like to sit down with Virgil Abloh and talk about design. I think it was like 10 people that won, and I won, and this was before I even was really big into YouTube, so it had nothing to do with my YouTube channel 
channel or anything like that. But I will say that having the sneaker did really help my YouTube channel because I got the shoe like two months early, so no one else had a review of the sneaker. So I got a lot of viewership on it. But honestly, the best part of the experience was meeting Virgil Abloh and getting to talk to him and just having the experience of meeting a designer that I've looked up to so much and has created one of the most iconic lines of sneakers of all time is uh is pretty incredible. So that's one of the main reasons why I made the goal of season three of the $20 sneaker collection to be grabbing the entire Off-White the 10 collection because I just love what he did with that collection and I'd love to have the entire collection. And honestly, it was a pretty pivotal moment in my professional career and, and something I'll never forget. So, you know, if I could say thank you to Virgil Abloh, I would. Um, and I think I did many times through videos. I don't know if you ever saw them, but he really did have a pretty major impact on my life. So thank you, Virgil. Thank you all for watching this video and I'll see you guys in the next one.